All right, next up we've got Phyllis who's going to give us an update on Container Day. Yeah, just move the middle one. That way it's going to turn. There you go. All right. Good to see everybody. Um, who's heard of Container D? All right. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on a uh, deep dive of the architecture. There's lots of great talks on that that you can find. Um, most recently, KubeCon Seattle. We did both an intro and a deep dive where we had more time. But in 20 minutes, I'm just going to kind of give you an update on the past year. I spoke in this room last year. Container D was a bit younger then. We had just uh, reached our 1.0 a few months before that. So I'm going to kind of start there and, and let you know what's happened in the past year. Uh, a little bit of overview. I just threw a few slides in here from our graduation proposal to the CNCF, just because it happened to be a good collection of information. Um, so sounds like, again, m most of you have heard of Container D. Again, the reason uh, it sort of came to life uh, related to this idea of um, just uh, contentions around uh, what Docker was becoming, uh, Kubernetes gaining popularity, and an outcry of, hey, we just want a boring container runtime that can be this sort of level playing field on which uh, Docker can build its, its uh, projects and products. The Kubernetes community can have this sort of core container runtime that moves at a slower pace and has uh, well-supported releases. So that was kind of the basis on which Container D came to life. Um, and really the key tenets are, that we've focused on uh, since we created the project is reliability and stability, so strong guarantees about the API, about its life, uh, uh, you know, EOL dates, uh, how long things are supported, a very clear and stable client API. And so I think up on the screen, those tweets are way too small to read. Uh, I'll post all this online uh, after the talk. But these are people saying, hey, the API is great. It's so easy to build on top of Container D. And we'll look at how that's grown in the past year to not just being used by Docker and Kubernetes, but others are finding that API attractive and using Container D as a runtime in their own personal projects or even larger projects. Uh, and then performance, again, is a, another key focus area that we've had. Uh, the community has grown quite a bit in the past year. Um, this graph, again, way too small for you to take too many meaningful things from it, although it's straight from the CNCF dashboard, so at any time you can go to the DevStats uh, website on the CNCF and dig into any project and all the statistics. But you can see at some point when we joined CNCF, it's interesting to note a, a broad array of new contributors showed up and a lot more activity across a lot more companies. We currently have 12 maintainers uh, representing eight different companies, uh, and we also have a, a class of um, project uh, maintainers we call reviewers who can LGTM and, and that even adds more companies who are involved in the building of Container D. Um, again, I, I just mentioned that usage, again, that initial uh, kind of proposal for Container D was let's have this stable, boring container runtime that Docker can build on, that Kubernetes can build on. Uh, but since then, uh, we've definitely seen a huge increase in the number of adopters of uh, projects that are using Container D. And I'll come around uh, toward the end of the talk and talk about a few of these um, and, and show this list again. Um, as I mentioned, the, those uh, slides we just looked at came from the graduation proposal. The CNCF has uh, levels of maturity, and uh, Kubernetes has graduated, and a, a few others, core, core DNS, I believe. Um, you can find that on the CNCF website. But at the moment, um, we uh, proposed to graduate last November, I think is when we opened this PR. Uh, you can read there, again, the URL is at the top, and I'll post this uh, set of slides as well so you can follow through to the links. Um, effectively, uh, we presented this to the CNCF late in the year. Uh, then there was KubeCon and a TOC election, so uh, we're just now getting back uh, on the docket to, to graduate. Uh, that may or may not be important to, to some of you, but uh, at least this document 
uh, collects up the uh, requirements for graduation, and you can see some things that we've done in the last year to uh, uh, approach uh, project health, maturity of the code base, security audit, all those things are referenced in here and may be of interest uh, to some of you. Uh, I'll skip this first one because that's history prior to last FOSDEM. Um, this picks up here, uh, we had just done 1.0 uh, late 2017, so last year at FOSDEM we were a few months into that. And then a few months after FOSDEM, we uh, released our 1.1 release. Um, that's around the time that the CRI implementation, so again the plugin that implements the Kubernetes CRI interface uh, was a separate project and I think I may have said uh, in the containers dev room last year that the CRI project was going to merge into our uh, same GitHub repo. Uh, that did happen and now the CRI and ContainerD core itself are developed by the same group of people. Uh, the maintainers for the CRI plugin are also maintainers in ContainerD and vice versa. So we've been working together now for uh, just about a year. And then uh, ContainerD 1.2 was released in October, again just about uh, three months ago. The runtime shim API stabilized and that's now being used by Kata and Firecracker as was mentioned in a prior talk uh, here today. Uh, again, we've continued to focus on stability and also extensibility, which we'll look at uh, in the architecture. Um, so I, I don't remember where we were a year ago uh, with both IBM Cloud and, and Google's, uh, Google Cloud's managed Kubernetes offering, but now both of us, both IBM Cloud and GKE have adopted ContainerD as the runtime underneath our Kubernetes offerings. Um, and so, again, you can go to GKE and uh, uh, start to create a cluster and you can select ContainerD as the runtime for IBM Cloud. If you create Kubernetes 1.12 or now 1.13 clusters, you automatically get ContainerD as a runtime. Uh, I just mentioned for graduation the security audit, so the CNCF pays for a uh, third party um, security company to do audits of your code base and your project. And so that uh, work completed in December. And so that's now published on our GitHub repo and on our website. Uh, and that's, that's actually a really uh, well done report uh, on the code quality and security posture of ContainerD. Uh, and I already talked about the graduation criteria. Um, the interesting thing uh, that I wanted to mention that I, that I said earlier is that we're seeing use cases not just in these sort of traditional Docker and Kubernetes models, but uh, we're in discussions with CERN about uh, use of ContainerD in the HPC space, and we'll see why that may be interesting when we look at the plugin model that we've uh, matured in the last year. Uh, you've already heard about Firecracker if you were in the room earlier. Uh, that uh, Rust-based VMM has an integration with ContainerD as well. And again, a lot of that coming out of focusing on a pluggable design and having a clean uh, usage API. Um, so this is uh, the architecture. I'm gonna, again, I'm not doing a deep dive here today in 20 minutes, because uh, I really couldn't um, do that in a feasible way, but we'll look at some highlights, and, and like I said, it's, it's uh, very easy to go out to YouTube and find the talks from KubeCon Seattle, uh, the deep dive talk especially, digging into the the architecture, but effectively there's a set of gRPC services that are, are organized around um, containers, images, and namespaces, uh, and the metadata around that, um, and that those services sit over top of a runtime manager which gives us the pluggability to not just use run C, uh, but run HCS, so we have full Windows support now uh, that Microsoft has provided uh, through their uh, OCI implementation. Uh, Kata Containers has a shim. Again, you can actually, with the Kata integration of Firecracker, you can use their shim to either drive their QMU KVM based uh, lightweight virtualization, or you can now use it uh, after the PR merged in December uh, to drive Firecracker from the Kata shim. And again, that's pluggable, and, and other uh, shims can show up there as well. And then snapshotters are the interface to file systems like Overlay, 
So traditionally in Docker, you think of graph drivers, uh, snapshotters are a simpler interface that can also be extended, and that's uh, where CERN is interested in having a snapshotter that understands their uh, highly distributed file system. So we'll focus on a few, few areas here, the next few slides. Um, the Go API that I talked about, the client library, um, is being used by Docker, of course, by our CTR tool, our client tool, by Alibaba's uh, pouch container project um, and other projects as well. Uh, this is the area where, you know, people have been very happy with the design um, of this API. It's clean, it's easy to use, and it, it simply operates around the OCI specifications. So give me an OCI config and a bundle, and Containerd can create and start containers. It also handles push-pull, so it obviously can talk to registries um, and actually is extensible uh, if you want to do uh, more interesting things than the standard uh, Docker v2, and which is now becoming the OCI distribution spec. Uh, again, that sits over top of the actual gRPC API. If you wanted to use a specific service of Containerd without using Containerd as a whole, uh, then you can go straight to the gRPC API and have low-level access to components. There's some interesting projects uh, we highlight that people have built just using the services themselves. Uh, it also has built-in uh, metrics support exposed through Prometheus. You can turn that on in your config. Um, and then I mentioned the CRI plugin. So this is obviously how uh, Kubernetes support is provided through Containerd. Um, the plugin now obviously uses that same Go client, so it's the CRI plugin is written in Go and becomes a client of Containerd to handle the CRI API calls, um, and it, in fact uses the same listener Unix socket. So Kubelet talks to the CRI, says create me a sandbox, uh, create me a container, and the CRI plugin obviously uses the Containerd uh, Go API to to uh, actually do that work in Containerd. Um, so CRI is just one of many plugins. Again, the, the um, design is pluggable. Uh, CRI is one type of plugin. Uh, it's built in by default, so if you download a Containerd release, you automatically have the CRI plugin, and part of that is why we merge the repositories. Snapshotter plugins, like I said, there's gonna be built-ins like Overlay, ButterFS, AUFS, uh, but now we actually, in version 1.2 of Containerd, we support custom plugins, and so you can actually have uh, your own snapshotter, your own custom file system. Uh, this is what we're working on with CERN, um, and this allows you to, to basically not even build yourself into the Containerd code base, but have Containerd call your plugin to do the uh, snapshotter operations. Uh, and I believe we actually have an example of that in the code base, so if you want to see what it looks like to use um, an external snapshotter, uh, Derek McGowan, one of our maintainers, actually wrote a simple one, and uh, I think the deep dive talk actually covers that in detail. I mentioned runtime plugins, so again, this is where uh, you can um, use uh, custom shims for other runtimes other than Run C. Um, Obviously, the most common use case is VM-based runtimes like Kata or Firecracker, uh, but it's also used by the Windows team to support uh, calling out to their Windows shim uh, to support Windows containers. Uh, the interesting thing is we actually have a client install command that works with images, so you could create a container image, uh, put your runtime plugin um, in that image as a single file, and use CTR install, get it installed into your Containerd um, installation, and then begin using it. And uh, I think uh, Darren Shepard from Rancher said this is an amazing feature that now he can basically package his, his whole project, use Containerd to install it and run it without creating any other packaging. Um, so again, the whole idea here was to have extensibility. So Anything you need to do that Containerd hasn't provided for you, these are all interfaces that you can implement yourself. Uh, I already mentioned 
uh, the resolver interface, uh, say you have a special custom registry or some other way that you want to interact uh, with container images, you can implement that. Um, and then again, the uh, server side also has the plugin architecture where you can register and then have your own plugins and have direct access to the rest of the Containerd services. Uh, I mentioned I would come back around um, to adoption. Um, obviously, uh, I think most of, let's see what we haven't talked through. I mentioned both cloud, so GKE and IBM Cloud Kubernetes service, uh, both using Containerd uh, today. Uh, Docker obviously has been using Containerd for a while. I think the important point here is that uh, Docker has been using the runtime side of Containerd for a number of years now. Uh, but the image, uh, so you can think of the Docker code base having a, a set of features that now Containerd has. And so there'll be a set of refactoring of the Docker code base, uh, probably mostly this year, to start using more of Containerd services and removing that code from Docker. And so you'll see uh, an increase of the use of Containerd uh, from the Docker engine going forward. Uh, Linux Kit uh, uses Containerd as its uh, runtime within the uh, immutable images you build. Uh, I mentioned Rancher's Rio project from Darren Shepard. Uh, we've talked about Kata and their shim and Firecracker as well. Um, Bellina is a, a Mobi project uh, subset, so that's just the, the Docker engine side uh, for IoT. Uh, Cloud Foundry has been using Run C, so they, they basically wrote wrappers around the OCI Run C for their container runtime. And now the uh, Cloud Foundry uh, Garden project is actually using Container D and moving from Run C, which allows them to get rid of some of their code that was doing some of the image interactions and root file system uh, creation. They can now leave that up to Container D. Um, and then, of course, if you've ever followed Kelsey Hightower's uh, Kubernetes the hard way, uh, that also uses Container D as the Kubernetes runtime. Um, a few other uh, notes on integrations. Uh, we already talked about the CRI being part of the Containerd project now. Uh, yeah, so Derek actually put uh, here that in 2019, Docker should switch to actually use the Containerd image backend. Again, it's been using the runtime side of Containerd for a number of years already. Um, who's heard of BuildKit? Just a few. So. A very interesting open source project um, coming from uh, Tanis at, at Docker. Uh, Docker Build has been a feature of uh, the Docker engine for, for obviously forever. Uh, but BuildKit is basically that uh, build concept uh, separated out into its own project. And it's possible to use BuildKit standalone. It can drive Run C and it can also drive uh, Container D. And so uh, very recent versions of Docker Engine are now importing BuildKit, and it has a set of features that I don't have time to go into. Uh, very high performing and a lot of it, uh, interesting use cases with BuildKit. And so again, that's, a, that's an integration with Containerd as well. I mentioned Alibaba Cloud from China. Um, we have maintainers and reviewers uh, from Alibaba working on Containerd, and they're using it very broadly within their cloud. Uh, you can look at their open source pouch container project uh, for more detail on how they're using Containerd. I mentioned Cloud Foundry, Kata, Firecracker, and then a few personal projects. Uh, Michael Crosby, one of our core maintainers, uh, has a Boss project, which is a great example of how to drive Containerd from another Go program. And then Evan Hazlett has something that built around that called Stellar that does multi-node uh, clustering using Containerd. At the beginning, I talked a little bit about our CNCF maturity, uh, that our security review uh, was completed in December, and that's now published. And I already talked about the proposal and uh, that we expect that graduation review uh, sometime this year. So that's kind of a whirlwind tour through. I wanted to save a few minutes at the end. I think, um, I think we still have a f How much time do we have? One minute. Who has a very important question that will take one minute or less? 
Or did I answer all? OK, we have, we've got one question up here uh -huh. in the middle, Stefan. What? Right here. All right. Uh, what about Creo that is developed also by Red Hat, and why do you compete with yourself? Uh, that is not a question we can answer in one minute. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to talk about that. Dong Su was in here earlier and mentioned Creo. Um, my company happens to be purchasing Red Hat, so we're going to figure that out this year. Um, but uh, yeah, I, there's many things that go into that, but yep. All right, I think we're totally out of time. I'm going to point it.